Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. This is a fun week because it is a National Libraries Week. I don't know if I said that right. Library or Libraries Week. Um, and I know my library systems are doing a lot of fun things extra this week because of it being National Library Week. And in honor of National Library Week, I discovered a resource that one of my library systems has near me that is called Bookologist. And we're going to explore Bookologist today. This is going to be the start of a video because I think it takes a couple days to actually get response back. But what the Bookologist is, is basically um, it says RPL Bookologists, which is the public library, Richmond Public Library Bookologists, create on-demand, handcrafted, bespoke, book suggestion lists just for you. So I'm recording my screen. We're gonna go ahead in and answer the questions that it has for me. And we're gonna wait to see what kind of books they recommend. I'm really excited. I'm really excited. And a little like, not apprehensive or nervous because it doesn't matter. They're just gonna make a list of books and I'm very curious to see what they're gonna come up with. So let's go ahead and record my screen. And here we have it, Bookologist. We choose the books for you. So libraries are all about connecting books and readers. Sometimes the choices can seem overwhelming and you need a little help finding titles you really wanna read. RPL can help. The Bookologist is a bespoke reader's advisory service for adults, teens, and kids. Tell us your preferences by filling out a short form and we will carefully handcraft a list of titles just for you. Whether you're stuck in a reading rut, looking to read outside your comfort zone, or just looking for great suggestions, the bookologist can help. Oh my word, I'm so excited. Our book recommendations are bespoke, not canned, not an algorithm, but carefully hand-selected just for you. Like most arsenal pro artisanal products, they take time to create. Please allow three to five days, so later this week. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay. I need to put in my card number. I'll do that in just a moment, but we can put in my name. And I want adult books. Confirm email, okay. <laughs> number of books. I don't know, let's, let's, if it gives me up to 10, I don't wanna read that many. So let's do five. Let's get a list of five books. I don't want, I want adult. All right, I'll do, I'm 47. <laughs> um, would you like us to reserve the titles for pickup? Sure. Branch location, I'll put that in in a moment. Fill in at, one, at least one field, a book or author you would like the book to be like. Let me think, do I wanna go down like the mystery road? Do I wanna go down historical fiction, like heartfelt historical fiction. I could do like a Kristen Hanna or I could do a Frederick Bachman. I could do, let's do Kristen Hanna because hers are pretty popular these days. Kristen Hanna, oops, I'm trying to do this one-handed because I am at work, I don't have my tripod with me three titles or authors that you love. Okay, I'm gonna say Frederick Bachman. I'm just gonna say Sarah Adams because I keep coming back to that and maybe because we were talking about it in my live last night. That's like totally romance, which is different from the other two, but that's okay. That lightens it up a little bit because I feel like Frederick Bachman and Kristen Hanna are both on the heavier side of things. What's another title? that I love. Let's say Vera Wong's, because I loved that mystery. That gets the mystery aspect in there. Okay. Describe your perfect book in three to five words. I'm going to say emotional, heartwarming. I'm going to say found family. Emotional, heartwarming, found family. That, that works. Okay. Check as many that apply. Fiction. Sure. African-American, Christian, I don't really think I want to go for fantasy or horror or literary. Mystery is fine. Romance is fine. Ugh, thrillers. I don't really think thrillers. I'm going to stick with this. African-American, Christian, inspirational, mystery detective, and romance. 
I like suspense though. Let's click thrillers and suspense. Nonfiction. Do I want to do biography or memoir? Sure. That's the only one. <laughs> Mood. Dark, funny, happy, light, romantic, steamy, scary. All right, let's do tense and tragic, romantic, happy, light, and funny. That's like all of them except dark, steamy, and scary. <laughs> all the rest are fine. Okay, let's see. Focus, action, or events, characters, issues, and ideas, language, writing style, time, place, and setting. Okay, I'm not going to click oof, issues and writing style. I like action and I like characters. I like a good balance between those two. And I like a good setting. Okay, I'm not going to submit this yet because I need to go back and put in my library and my library card, but I'm not going to share that information. So I'll hop back on in one moment. Okay, I have put in my info. We're clicking submit. All right, so I got an email confirmation that they have received my request for the bookologist and that they are going to start working on it. And I just have to wait a couple days. So stay tuned. I'll be coming back once I have my list of books. I said that I wanted them all to just get put on hold. So hopefully I will get a call. My local library calls me when there are books on hold for me. So that's exciting. I'm really excited to see what they have. I also just asked my library if they have any local passes for gardens or museums or the zoo or things like that. I know when I lived in Massachusetts, my library had discounts for tours and I lived like 35 minutes outside of Boston and my local library had things that I could do up in Boston, like discounted things. Um, so they just told me that there's one for the science museum, which is amazing because the science museum is kind of pricey, but my little dude would love to go to the science museum. So I put it on hold. So we'll see how long it takes for that to come in. There are quite a few of them, but they're all checked out or on hold right now. So I just have to wait. Um, it's kind of fun to explore my library website to see all the different, there's book lists on there, new releases, like there's all kinds of things on there. I just saw where I can request the library to even order a book if I don't see it in the system. So I would encourage you to like check out your local library's website as well as just besides just the fun of going in and finding a book, which I might do at some point this week as well. Just like go in and kind of browse the library and bring a couple things home. That would be a fun, a fun video to honor and celebrate National Library Week. But hopefully this bookologist will get back to me within a couple of days and I'll let you know what they've picked for me. Hi friends, I am back. I have received an email from the bookologist and I'm not going to share my screen with this one. I, I'm just going to read through it with you. I was kind of hoping I would get a phone call from my library where I was going to have all these books put on hold at my library. Uh, but I haven't received that email and I didn't want to wait because I want to get this video up. But I will probably go and pick up these books at some point, hopefully, as soon as they come in, I guess. I don't know. I haven't looked at this email yet. Maybe I've read them all. I don't know. So I... I'm trying to like not scroll down too far in the email. So it says, thank you for contacting the Bacologist here at the RPL Richmond Public Library. We love connecting readers and books. Sometimes choosing books can get overwhelming, but the Bacologist can offer you a carefully handcrafted bespoke reading list. Same wordage, I love that. First, take a look at the RPL readers page and they link it. You'll find a plethora of themed book lists, something for every taste. That's fun. You like the author, Kristen Hanna and want books that are emotional, heartwarming, and about found family. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> novel list, available with your RPL library card, another link, novel list, describes Hannah as writing character-driven novels that focus on relationships, particularly in families. That's pretty accurate. Authors most often compared to Kristen Hannah include Marie Benedict, who I don't love, her writing style, Emily Griffith, who I've never read, Ellen Hildebrand, who always has almost always, of the ones that I've read, she deals with a lot of adultery. And so I don't read Ellen Hildebrand anymore. Jojo Moyes, I've read a couple. Jennifer Weiner, I think I've only read one. Susan Wiggs, I don't think I've read. And Lisa Wingate, who I have read and loved. If any of these authors are new to you, consider them bonuses. Okay, so that was not part of the plan. But I 
definitely would pick up more Lisa Wingate and maybe try a Susan Wiggs or Emily Griffith. I don't, I think I've, I'm done with Marie Benedict. I'm, I'm not going to read Ellen Hildebrand. Maybe I'd read another Jojo Moyes if anything like stands out to me, I guess. And Jennifer Weiner, Weiner, I don't know. Okay, your list is all heartwarming, sometimes heartbreaking fiction about families, those we're born into and those we make. Okay, I'm excited about that. So the first one, Brit Marie Was Here by Frederick Bachman. I already love this book. When Brit Marie walks out on her cheating husband, she finds work as the caretaker of a soon-to-be-demolished rec center. The fastidious Brit Marie soon finds herself being drawn into the daily doings of her fellow citizens, an odd assortment of miscreants, drunkards, and, drunkards and layabouts. I really love Brit Marie was here. You first meet Brit Marie in My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. She's a side character, lives in the same building, and not a very likable personality in, in My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. And she also starts out being unlikable in Brit Marie Was Here. But as you get to know her and the way that she thinks, she's a bit neurodiverse. I don't think anything is ever named, it has OCD tendencies, and so is quite socially awkward. But as you just get to know her and the way that she thinks and the reasons that she thinks the way she does and the people that she ends up being surrounded by, it's so lovely. <laughs> I love it. Frederick Brockman is a favorite of mine. So one for one, loved it, but I already read it. Second one, Collected Regrets of Clover by Mickey Bremer. I've also read this one already. Just recently, at the, towards the end of 2023, I read this one. Clover spends so much time with the dying that she has no life of her own until the final wishes of a feisty old woman send Clover on a trip across the country to uncover a forgotten love story and perhaps her own happy ending. Yeah, this is a book that deals with grief. It's something that I enjoy reading about and find pretty therapeutic. And I really did enjoy The Collected Regrets of Clover very much, very much. So two for two. <laughs> the third one is a book I've never heard of before. Something in the Air, H-E-I-R, by Suzanne Enoch. Let's see what she says about this one. Emmeline and William Pershing have enjoyed a perfectly convenient marriage for eight years. Their relationship is a seamless blend of their talents and goals. They've settled into separate, well-ordered lives beneath the same roof and are content to stay, stay that way, or so Emmeline thinks. So it sounds like it's going to be a marriage-focused book. Convenient marriage for eight years. I'm wondering if it's if it's historical in any way. I don't know. I'll have to... I'll have to look that one up. I, I put a picture in, but as of right now filming, I don't know what the picture looks like. So I don't know if it looks like it's a Regency or what, but I'm excited to try. Then we have Agatha of Little Neon by Claire Luchette, a debut novel about yearning and sisterhood, figuring out how you fit in or don't, and the unexpected friends who help you find your truest self. Okay, that sounds good. Agatha of Little Neon, another one that I have never heard of before. I love that. Okay, and number five. Oh, I got more than five. I thought I said five, but I'm excited. There's more. <laughs> the Invisible Husband of Frick Island by Colleen Oakley. I have heard of this one, but I've not read it. Piper Parrish's life on Frick Island, a tiny remote town smack in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay, is nearly perfect. Well, aside from one pesky detail, her darling husband, Tom, is dead. Piper, rocked to the core, did a most peculiar thing, carried on as if her husband was still alive. And what were the townspeople to do but to go along with their beloved widowed Piper? So the whole town pretends along with her that her husband is still there. So I don't know how that's going to all play out. It's a book that has caught my eye before. So I definitely am very interested in reading that one. And then we have Dear Mrs. Bird by A.J. Pierce. This is the third one that I have already read. Emmeline Lake and her best friend Bunty are doing their bit for the war effort and trying to stay cheerful despite the German planes making their nightly raids. Emmy dreams of becoming a lady war correspondent and when she, sp when she spots a job advertisement in the newspaper, she seizes her chance. But after a rather unfortunate misunderstanding, she finds herself typing letters for the formidable Henrietta Bird, a renowned advice columnist of the Women's Friend magazine. So this is exactly what it says. It takes place during World War II, but uh, about a young woman who wants to be a journalist, ends up writing for an advice columnist and kind of butts heads with the person who's in charge of this column. 
because of their different ways of thinking, um, all with kind of this war backdrop, had charming characters in, in a in a story that totally drew me in. I loved Dear Mrs. Bird. And I've also enjoyed yours cheerfully, the sequel. And then there's a third one that more that recently came out as well that I would like to read. Okay, number seven, Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutanto, the fourth one that I've read. And I loved this book so much. It was so funny. Found family. It says Vera Wong is a lonely little old lady. A lonely little old lady. Ah, a lady of certain age who lives above her forgotten tea shop in the middle of San Francisco's Chinatown. One morning, Vera trudges downstairs to find a curious thing, a dead man in the middle of her tea shop. In his outstretched hand, a flash drive. Vera doesn't know what comes over her, but after calling the cops like any good citizen would, she sort of swipes the flash drive. And that begins her quest to discover the murderer on her own. And in the process, creates this little found family around her of people that she suspects, but also adores. <laughs> grows to love, I should say. And then number eight is another one that I've never heard of before. The Sunset Years of Agnes Sharp by Leonie Swan. Leonie Swan. Agnes Sharp was n has never wanted to go gently into the good night. To serve her neighbors and keep her own social instincts humming, she's opened her home to an ever-growing list of parishioners, of pensioners, excuse me, when the police visit to tell the residents about the fatal shooting of neighboring Mildred Puck, Agnes's overwhelming reaction is relief because now she and her housemates can drag Lilith's, Lilith's corpse out of hiding and persuade Inspector Locke and Sergeant Tom Wink that both old ladies were shot by the same person. What? What? <laughs> so that sounds like a mystery with elderly people, which I am totally here for. I have never heard of that before. What on earth happened to Lilith and why were they hiding the body? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I need to get my hands on the sunset years of Agnes Sharp. That sounds so good. <laughs> okay, number whatever. Hang the Moon by Jeanette Walls. I actually have this on my book of the month shelf. This is a novel set during Prohibition. So we have Duke Kincaid had four wives and three acknowledged children. Sally Kincaid, his middle child, was sent away at age eight because Duke's new wife doesn't like her. Nine years later, she returns, determined to reclaim her place. And this proves complicated. I read Jeanette Walls's memoir. Um, oh man, now what was it called? Glass, Glass House? Glass Houses? No. The Glass House? I can't remember the name of her memoir, but I read it and I did really enjoy her writing style. It was a, just a hard story to, to re read about her life. And I know people have had mixed feelings about her memoir, but I did really enjoy it. And I'm curious to try a fiction written by her. So this description didn't say anything about it being a little bit historical set during Prohibition, but I know that that is the case. I think I know that's the case. I could be wrong. But yeah, that's on my shelves already. So definitely I'm interested in reading Hang the Moon. Then I think this is the last one, Perfect Little World by Kevin Wilson. I have read this one. When Isabel Poole meets Dr. Preston Grind, she's fresh out of high school, pregnant with her art teacher's baby, and totally on her own. This was another book of the month that I had a long time ago, and it's about this doctor, Preston Grind, who wants to create this little community where this these 10 families raise the children collectively. The kids are not technically, I think, even supposed to know who their actual parents are. It, it, was, it was a strange book. If you know, Kevin Wilson is also the one that wrote the one about the kids that can spontaneously combust when they get angry. I forget the name of that one, but his books are just slightly strange <laughs> and slightly unbelievable, but I have read that one. So I've read half of these and then five of them I haven't. And the ones that I'm most eager to read are Hang the Moon and The Sunset Years of Agnes Sharp and The Invisible uh, Husband of Frick Island, for sure. Agatha of Little Neon and Something in the Air I'm also curious about as well. So why not give them a try? If you read like I do, or you like any of the descriptions of those books, there you have it. All of these are available from the RPL. You can place holds at, from the hot links or call your nearest branch. So I'm wondering, maybe they aren't going to be put on hold for me. That's okay. If I veered off in the wrong direction, please let me know. I always have backup suggestions by, and then the name of the librarian who did my 
re recommendations. That was so cool. I love that that's a tool that my library has. I'm definitely going to go see if I can find the audiobooks for some of those. Um, in particular, Hang the Moon, because it's already on my shelves. Um, and then, yeah, those other two, Sunset Years of Agnes Sharp and Invisible Husband of Frick Island. Hopefully one or two of those will make it onto my April wrap up by the end of the month. I just love that this is a resource that my library has. And I would love for you to look into your library and see if they have something similar. If they don't, feel free to go ask your librarian, like, what are you reading right now? What are, what's your been of recent five-star read that you've had? Or I really love this type of mystery, a mystery that will make me laugh. Do you have any suggestions? Librarians are there to be a resource. And I bet they love getting questions like that. Because <laughs> there's probably a lot of administrative behind the scenes kind of stuff that they have to do. So getting to talk books with people is probably the highlight of their day, I would, I would think. <laughs> so I would encourage you to go check out your library, see what surprise resources you might find there. And stay tuned to see if I read any of these recommendations from my bookologist. <laughs> All right, that's going to be it. Let's chat down in the comments below. I love chatting with you down there. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me today. I really appreciate you being here and I look forward to talking with you in another video very soon. Bye.